Ha! Hey everyone, Hassan here. Welcome to the world of Ha. Today I have another Nintendo Switch related video for you. These are the Nintendo Entertainment System controllers for the Nintendo Switch. These are a Nintendo Switch Online exclusive. What that means is if you are a subscriber to the Nintendo Switch Online service, whether it's the individual service for uh, $20 a year or the family uh, plan for $35 a year, um, then you have the privilege to be able to pay money to buy these. So, so you don't get these for being a subscriber, you get the ability to buy them. Uh, and then these would be an additional, I believe, $60, although one-time payment. Um, and they are in limited quantity, so I don't even know if you can still order these or not. Uh, I think you, you probably still can, but they might not be around for very long, so keep that in mind. Um, what these are, are NES controllers for your Switch, basically. That's, that's pretty much what they are, because as part of the Nintendo Switch Online service, uh, there is uh, a library of NES games that you can play. So what better way to play NES games than with NES controllers? So here they are, uh, really simple style packaging, uh, but using the similar, the, the typical red uh, with white uh, color scheme that a lot of Nintendo Switch stuff has. So a Nintendo logo at the top. And the back of the box right there shows you this is a set of two NES controllers for the Nintendo Switch system. Uh, before using the controllers for the first time, charge and pair them. Um, so yeah, here they are. And I want to do a little unboxing and test of these controllers. So let's sort of jump right in. I debated buying these at first, to be honest. I wasn't sure if I was going to get them. Because, I, I mean, NES games are you know, kind of fun a little bit, but I'm, I, I grew up on Nintendo 64. So NES, Super Nintendo, I don't have that nostalgia for some of these games. It's cool to have, but I'm not like, you know, dying to play these games uh, compared to other content I would play on the Switch. Um, but that being said, these are little collectibles, and I thought it would be interesting to check out, especially since I collect Joy-Cons. So these aren't Joy-Cons, but I was like, well, I collect other types of controllers. Let me at least get these and see how they are. So here they are right here. They're two of the exact same things, basically. Uh, well, actually, I take that back. The, the difference being one slides into one side and one slides into the other, but the actual controller itself, this part of it, is the exact same. So there's your, your D-pad right there, your select and start buttons, and the very simple A and B buttons right there. So on the top, you have L and R um, right there, which uh, I I don't think... Uh, so NES games didn't have L and R buttons, so I wonder if they're used for other things, potentially. Um, so we'll check that out. So then the back says Nintendo controller. Um, so there it is right there. Oh, I don't think you can even see that. So let me, sorry about that. Let me try and focus here first. Uh, there we go, Nintendo controller. So um, yeah, very simple. And again, same thing for this one. Uh, the difference being, as you can see, the arrows are right here on the, where the left Joy-Con is, or the left uh, button is, L button. Uh, and on this side, they are right here where the R button is. Because these dock into different sides of the Nintendo Switch. So that's the other thing that we are going to check out. So let's go into the Switch and we'll go into the controllers menu here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to detach these Joy-Cons and we are going to focus on these NES controllers. So the way that these pair up with your Switch and how they charge is they dock on the sides like Joy-Cons and it looks really weird. So I'm kind of curious to see how they look here. So all you gotta do is find the Joy-Cons with the arrow pointing down so you know which way they dock in. So this one is pointing uh, down so it goes this way. Um, with the buttons facing you as well. So let's, uh, and they don't sit like this. So they sit sort of like this. You can't have your switch resting and then dock it all the way. So you're gonna kind of have to hold it a little bit, which makes it again, a little bit more awkward, but let's let's try this out. And there you go. Um, so it, it says paired right there. So let's uh, plug the other one in and paired again. And so if you actually look at the switch, look at, at that, it actually has the little NES controller icons in there. That is, this is just so, 
weird. Look at this, guys. Like, are, are you seeing this right now? This is so weird. Um, and this is how you charge the controllers. Um, wow, that is really interesting. So to take these off, just like how the Joy-Cons typically have the button in the back to slide them off, so these have little buttons right there as well. So you just hold it down and slides right out. So it is very easy to dock and, and, and undock uh, the, the controllers, but it's just so odd. Uh, but now that they are paired, what we should be able to do is control the Nintendo Switch with these controllers here. So I am going to try and turn off some of these lights here so we can at least get a little glimpse as to how they look, potentially. Let me move these away a little bit. Okay, there we go. So I have one of the controllers right here. Let's press B. And yep, we are out of there. So as you can see, we are, we are in. So I'm going to go over to where I have the NES app. So this um, NES app is free to download for Nintendo Switch Online members. So we'll close Super Smash Brothers and uh, let's boot this up and try out a game using this controller. New update is available. Oh, I, I need to... Uh, download an update apparently. So in the meantime, while that downloads in the background, the other thing I can show you is a little comparison because Nintendo also had these NES controllers that released recently. Um, so you may be familiar with this one, which is the version that came with the, um, the NES Classic Edition. Uh, and you could also buy one separately, although they were very hard to find um, to buy separate. But uh, this is the one that came with the NES Classic Edition, and these had a wired cable, and they had the, the same connector that is used for accessories to Wii remotes. Um, so this can't work with Switch unless there's a third-party accessory out there that perhaps uses this um, attachment right there. Um, but in terms of, like, size, shape, and everything, um, it's the same, uh, which makes sense because this was supposed to be representative of the NES controller, the original, and so is this. So they're pretty much the same in the look and feel of it. Um, but we are going to go into a game here. Oh, there's new games that I haven't even checked. So, but we're going to focus on the ones down here. Let's see. What can I, is there a classic, uh, I guess I could try and do, um, well, let's see what, what's here. I have not booted up the app like ever since it released, I'll be honest with you. So there's a lot of games, as you can see, a lot of new titles that have been added since I've opened it up. Uh, wow, it's a lot of stuff here. Um, do we have the original Super Mario Bros? Am I not? Oh, there it is, okay, yeah, that's right. Um, so, oh, okay, so it's popping up saying L and R together suspend the game, basically. So I'm gonna hit start and we're just gonna jump in, basically and see how it feels to control. Yeah, I mean, oh, well, I just died right there. <laughs> but that's just me being terrible at the game. Um, but the controller feels like it's working fine. Uh, and the nice thing is you, you have two controllers, so if there are games that do have two player, you certainly, you know, do have the flexibility to do two player. All right, you guys get the idea. Oh, and then I can, of course, L and R, and then it will then go into the um, the suspend screen right there. So, um, and then it says right here, L is capture and R is home. So that's actually kind of neat. So if I'm in the middle of the game, if I go back to my game and I'm playing this game here, and let's say I want to take a screenshot, so I can press L, took a screenshot, nice, and I press R, and I'm right there at the home menu. That's actually pretty cool. I like how they um, they incorporated those features in there because I do like the, the capture functionality. So very cool. Um, yeah, I actually think this is kind of nice. I definitely would prefer these than using like the Joy-Cons or something to play uh, the NES controller or the NES games. I think this obviously feels pretty natural, right? Um, so the other question, because I think there are a couple questions that I've seen some people have is, 
yeah, these controllers are docked and they're not meant to be played this way. But can you play this way? And the answer is sort of. So you see, with it docked like this, it's actually obeying the left and right. And if I press A, I am in the game. And B is B. So if I wanted to play like this, I actually can play like this. I can, this is insane. What kind of a setup is this? Granted, this is probably not gonna be the most comfortable thing in the world because obviously there's no grip. These are like flat things. So it's, it's not gonna be very comfortable. Um, so I don't know why you would want to do it. But if the question is, is it possible? I mean, you're seeing right now, it most certainly <laughs> is possible. Uh, which is pretty crazy to me. Um, yeah, wow, I, that's, <laughs> that's so insane. Um, so, let's exit out of there. The other test is when Nintendo announced this thing, they said, they claimed, that these controllers would only be compatible with this NES um, uh, app with all those games. But I have heard that this actually does work with any game. Uh, the difference being, or the, the main important thing to note, is just because it works in every game doesn't mean it's functional in every game. Meaning, I can try and use this in Super Smash Brothers. The problem is, it doesn't work to move your character, because in Super Smash Brothers, you use the analog stick to move. And you can remap controls, but you cannot map the analog movement to a D-pad. So you can't move, basically. Um, that being said, I don't know if it works in something like Mario Kart. So I kind of want to try that out. So we're just going to experiment a little bit and see what games it's possible and what games are not. New updates available. I'm just going to start it right now. I'll download the update later. I'm not going to play online or anything. Um, so let's try this out. I I'm just going to try it with like Mario Kart and see if it works. Um, just to, to prove a point. Uh, see if it truly is functional or not. So, all right, so we're in into the menu, single player, okay. So far, so good. Uh, let's just jump into Versus. Okay. Um, I should mention that there's a plus minus thing there. So select uh, actually does work for that. So if you wanted to see the stats and stuff, pressing select or start, either one, uh, works in that function. Okay, so there's that. Uh, all right, that sounds good. Let's just jump right into uh, just a basic stage right here because I just want to see if this truly does work. I don't know if you can use... Can you use the D-pad in Mario Kart to steer? I'm trying to think. Um, I'm not sure. So let's see. I do... I think so. Yeah, you can. So I am actually playing Mario Kart. And I have L and R buttons, but they're not very comfortable. So I'm pressing R at the top to drift. Um, so it is certainly possible. I can press L. Yeah. I mean, there you go, guys. I am playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. with an NES controller. So in case you were wondering, is it possible or not? The one thing I do want to mention, um, oh, did I have auto accelerate on? Um, I might have actually had it on. I I'll turn it off, but you can see, I am still able to accelerate anyways. So yeah, uh, but the one thing I was gonna say is that whole special thing about L for capture and R for home is only in that NES app. So right now, if I press L or R, it's gonna do whatever L or R does in this game. So there's no way to take a screen capture uh, using the NES controllers in any other game, basically. Um, yeah, so just keep that in mind. But, I mean, it's possible. It's not super comfortable, um, so do keep that in mind. But otherwise, it seems to work. Um, the other question that I've seen, going along with that, I'm just grabbing it here, is, can you use these, um, because this uses the same connector, 
can you use the Joy-Con straps? Um, and this is where I'm, I don't know the answer to this and I kind of want to test it out, but I also have to be a little careful because as you know with the Joy-Cons, putting the Joy-Con strap in the wrong way leads to uh, some struggles. So I just want to make sure, so if the pluses align, then that means the lock thing is where the arrows are pointing that way. Um, so let's try it with this one then. So I know that I have it going this way. And then in this case, I would slide it like that. So let's try. Does this work? It does. Um, that's kind of crazy to me. <laughs> so it does work. Um, and then taking it off. It, I mean, it goes. Um, so the question is, is this going to help me in my normal, in, in playing Mario Kart with the L and R buttons being challenging? Because you'll see SL and SR are the exact same place. Um, I don't know why they didn't just name them SL and SR to keep it consistent. But um, we're just going to try this here. So I'm going to use the minus side on this one um, because this is the controller that's connected. And let's see how, how this goes with... Uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Um, oh, I'm going off the stage. Okay, so let's see. Is it more comfortable? I mean, a little bit maybe, but it's still not very comfortable at all. It's, it's a little more uh, uncomfortable for different reasons. Reason being, here, to press SL and SR, it's just a little hard to push the buttons because they're small. Whereas in this case, they're, they're easier to push, but I do feel like I have to stretch my hands a little bit further up because this is taller now, which is pushing them against the sides a little bit more. Um, so it's, it's odd. It certainly is very odd, as you can see, but it's, it's possible. <laughs> um, so that's what I wanted to explore is what is possible with these NES controllers and what isn't. Um, so in case you're wondering what they all look like, um, there it is with a green Joy-Con strap. Let me grab some other ones here real quick. Um, I just want to grab a few um, because why not, while we're looking at this anyways, let's just check out what's possible or not possible for these uh, Joy-Con strap colors. So here's yellow. So in case you were wondering what uh, what that would look like, it's literally just sitting on top. It's nothing, nothing fancy. Um, let's take the blue. Okay, there you go. Um, take this neon, I think this is the neon red. So, okay, we have pink. Oops, it's locked, let me unlock it, okay. There you go. Uh, we just have the standard black one. So there you have that. We have gray. Oops. Okay. There it is. Um, what else am I missing? Then we have the uh, the special Pikachu and Eevee ones. So we have sort of this off-white color right here. Okay. And last but not least, the brown. So there you have it. So is it is it meant to do that? Not really. Um, it's it's not really meant to, but it's a thing. So um, that's it, guys. That's the uh, the NES controllers in a nutshell. So let me just detach or reattach them here. And there you have it. Um, these are very, very interesting. Uh, if you wanted to actually, you know what? Okay, we're, we're getting kind of crazy. I There's one other thing that I want to test now that I just thought about. What if I have 
this combo, a Joy-Con and an NES controller. I don't think that's gonna work, but I might be wrong. Like for something like Super Smash Brothers. Because the big thing is you can't move without the analog stick. But if I have an analog stick, will that work properly? Let's find out. I actually just thought about this. <laughs> so let's see if this works here. All right, we'll boot it up and check. Again, this is not practical by any means. This is not comfortable. Um, so keep that in mind. <laughs> this is not going to be the way that you want to enjoy the game. But we're gonna go crazy with it. And uh, let's see what happens. Let's just do this for now. Uh, All right, let's see. I'm just gonna jump and use uh, Mario for now. So let's see what happens. I mean, so far it's pretty functional. I'm just trying to think in terms of jumping might be a little challenging because I don't have an X, Y button. Yeah, so, um, okay. Oh, interesting. So pushing the buttons down here, so pushing up on the D-pad, or the D-pad at all, it acts as a home button and it takes me out. So here's the interesting thing, I turned off the tap to jump. Um, so I can't jump. So, let me turn, on, turn that off actually. But otherwise A and B seem to be working just fine. Um, the only other thing that you're going to be missing is I don't have an R and ZR button. Um, so you would just have to use L and ZL if you wanted to, to do that. So let's see how functional or not this is going to be if I turn off. Okay, so I, I turned off my custom controls because, uh, like I said, I had my tap to jump turned off. So that way I would have X and Y as my jump, but this doesn't have that. So let's see now how this goes. So yep, I can tap to jump. Yeah, I mean, it, it works. It's not ideal, certainly, you know, but it works. So, um, yeah, I, if you really want to get crazy with it and have a Joy-Con and NES controller combo, it's technically possible. <laughs> I don't know why you would ever want to do it, but that is that is very interesting. So these are essentially, they act like any other controller on the system. You're just limited in the buttons that you have on it, obviously. So. That's kind of cool because it's a lot more than what Nintendo initially said. And the reason that I bring that up as well, because you're probably looking at this like, why would I ever want to play Smash Brothers or Mario Kart with these? Like, it would suck. Unless it's like some sort of challenge that you're trying to do. Like, there's no reason to, right? But think about other old releases that have uh, been put up on the eShop or items like the Mega Man Legacy Collection, right? You can use NES controllers in any of these games. So that actually opens it up to a wider variety of games than just this one app. Uh, and that's actually really cool. And, and that's kind of what I expected, because like, how are they gonna block these controllers to only work in that one game? That just seems kind of weird. So I'm glad that that's not truly the case, and it really is, you can use it for anything. Because as you can see, they show up just as NES controllers. So there's rumors of Super Nintendo controllers and what else. I hope they do more of that, because I think it's kind of neat to have these different options. So, uh, yeah, hopefully um, we see more of that, and I think these are definitely worth looking into. Uh, if you are a fan of these controllers or plan to play some of these NES games or the Mega Man Legacy Collection, anything else that would use these types of controllers, um, definitely check it out. Um, the price is a little expensive, but then again, this is sort of a more collector's item, um, and uh, so I kind of get that, I guess. Um, but whether it's worth it or not is going to just be up to you in terms of how much you find use in the NES controllers. You know what to expect, so here they are. So, with that being said, let me know in the comment section below what you think. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care, and I will see you later.